Hello everybody, I am Ashley Fields with Yet Under Us and welcome, thank you for joining me tonight. We are going to be painting our Gobble Gobble Indian Turkey this evening. And so it is, um, it's kind of a nasty wet evening out here. I'm just outside of, of Houston in Conroe. And um, we're getting lots of rain today, but that's good. We really, really need it. So no complaints on my end about the rain, but the humidity might be, um, might be a little difficult tonight. I can tell you whenever the humidity is high, I, I usually do not paint because you have to deal with paint separation. So I'm, we're gonna cross our fingers and hope that we can get through it without the paint separation. And if there is paint separation, oh well, we'll keep going. And I'll always, I can always touch that stuff up later. So, especially because the humidity is high, we are definitely having to start with a lot of Windex, making sure this is as clean as we can get it. You want a nice, clean, dry surface, so. How's everybody doing tonight? Hey, Debbie, hey, Carla, hey, Kimberly. Hope y'all are doing good. I woke up this morning sick. I've not been feeling good. I think I've got like allergy, cold, sinus stuff going on. And I've been sneezing a lot and just kind of, you know, the sinus is drip in the back of your throat, not feeling too great. So I'm on some Mucinex and um, all that good stuff today, hoping to get that kind of cleared out of here pretty quick. But I hope everybody else is doing good. Um, I love this turkey. I think he is just so cute. And um, we use a lot of browns on here. So when it comes to shading and outlining, uh, you're, you're gonna be using a lot of shading brown and a lot of shading red. So, and Danae says, dude, I've been sneezing so much lately. Yes, Carly too. All of us, uh, or both of us have been having the allergy kind of fits and then this morning I woke up I'm like I'm just not feeling good there's all that pressure in here I think you can I look like I got the bags under my eyes I, I took a nap earlier I've literally been in bed all day I'm just not feeling too great so uh hopefully I'll be feeling better the next couple of days but you know mucinex and flonase and all that fun stuff that's been uh what I've been having to go to today so Carla says it's going good around, or it is going around. Yes, totally, totally, y'all. All right, so I'm gonna hop into it tonight so that after I get done, I can go take my cough syrup and go to bed and hopefully feel a little better tomorrow. Uh, but I started with uh, one thick, thick coat of um, reindeer brown. Typically I did, I would do two, but when my one dried earlier, I was like, oh, okay, I'm good. Uh, but if you have a lighter hand and you're not using a roller, definitely do two. So we started with the reindeer brown and then I base coated regular gray, um, lime green on these feathers right here. Uh, this one is yellow, uh, light yellow. And then, I'm trying to make sure you guys can see it. I got camel, and then uh, this bottom one is scarecrow white. And then of course we have light orange and red. So it's got a lot of the brown tone family. So a lot of this we're actually going to use shading brown on most of it. Um, I do think I'm going to go ahead and start with my shading yellow and go ahead and get my yellow shaded. I just prefer to go across the rainbow and start light and go dark. That's just kind of how I roll. You don't have to do it that way. It really doesn't matter. Um, this is just the way I prefer. So feel free to always jump around, you know, when you're doing colors or even thinking of like working in the middle and, and, you know, going outward, whatever works for you. If it's a larger piece that I'm doing, I can definitely say I might not care so much about the color first. It is definitely more about starting in the middle and working my way out. Hey, Joyce, I'm so glad you're able to come. Thank you, Danae. Denae says, she hopes I feel better. Yeah, y'all, uh, Carly went back to school a couple of weeks ago and every year it never matters um, every single year she goes back to school and then comes home with like a cold and all that crap or all that stuff, excuse me, ladies, and, uh, kind of sends it all around our household. So I, th I think that's what it is. But. Alrighty. Now on my feathers, I am going to do kind of that cross hatching. So I'm not putting any other lines other than just doing a little bit of perimeter shading. So on that light yellow, I obviously just use a little shading yellow. Y'all, I'm using that uh, Royal Gold uh, flat tip brush and it's number 16. It's the same brush I'll, I've been using a lot of lately. And that's the same shader I'm gonna be using all night. 
So I'm just kind of dry out that brush a little bit. Uh, let's see. I think I'm gonna do my scarecrow in camel. I don't have to. I could outline, or excuse me, I could shade this scarecrow with um, reindeer brown. I could shade it with shading brown if I wanted to. That all, any of those would be just fine. Actually, I think this is. I can't see y'all. Uh, I think this might be reindeer. We'll see. Gotta kind of get it on here. Is that reindeer? No, that is camel. Okay. It's hard to tell sometimes which color is uh, is which between reindeer and camel when it's it's getting darker over here, you know, earlier in the evening. And so I have a bad shadow where my table is. And um, it's not always easy to see the colors. I guess my eyes are getting kind of old at nighttime. The colors don't all look the same. Y'all, this turkey's kind of wide. I want to say he's like 24 inches wide, maybe even a little wider, maybe 28. So kind of hard to keep it all in the frame. I might have to move around a little bit. Hey, Victoria, how are you doing, hon? I hope everybody's doing good. How, how about the rain down there? I heard that they canceled school in some of the districts, you know, south of Houston. And over here, it just, I mean, yeah, it rained a little bit, but nothing crazy. And it definitely didn't rain all day. So I'm curious if, if it's raining a lot at everybody else's house. Let's see, I'm gonna do uh, a little bit of shading orange on the nose and this feather. I'm trying to see if I had any more, kind of recycling some spoons over here, but I think they already are wet with new colors. So, this paint's just separated. I didn't spend any time out here working today. Um, like I said, I've been not feeling too great in the bed, so all of these paints are definitely gonna be separated because I wasn't out here. All right, dipping that brush. Just gonna add a little bit around, you know, the nose. Nothing too crazy. Um, Miss Victoria, I don't know if some of you guys seen that her, her version of this turkey. Oh my goodness, how stinking cute was that? She patterned all the feathers and then did a black and white uh, border around it. And if you guys have not seen it, you've got to go look at that photo. It's absolutely precious. And she's actually going to do uh, a tutorial over the same pattern, but the way that she paints it, uh, I believe sometime in October. So we're so excited about that. I can't wait to see that. So Joy said she didn't get much rain. Yeah, same here in Conroe. Uh, Victoria said, nice rain, hard at times, but no real issues. See, we didn't really even have hard rain here. It was uh, kind of like it is now. It's like drizzling, sprinkling, you know, light, very, very light. Carla said it rained a lot in Alvin. Okay, see, goes to show how far apart we are, y'all. Alvin to Conroe, major, major differences. But you know what, y'all, in the summer, uh, every time I would leave my house to go drive to Paraland to take stuff to the store, it's not so hot at my house. And by the time I get to the store, it's like 15 degrees hotter. And I'm like, oh my Lord. I like living up in Conroe. <laughs> so I'm not that far, but it seems like the there's a major difference in our um, temperatures sometimes in the weather. Oh, here it is. I'm sitting here looking for my shade in green. Couldn't find it. So uh, Lynn says, where on the website can you get the templates? Lynn, right now the templates are underneath um, our blanks. We are eventually going to have a template, um, a separate template little button, you know, on the website, but we're working on it. Uh, we've, I, I, I don't know those of you that have been around a little bit, uh, but we've been working on the website for months now, if not a lot longer than that, and had some issues and now like we're kind of revamping and trying to do some new stuff over there. And so uh, we have people working on that. And as soon as that's kind of ready to go, then we can add in a new tab and kind of get it cleaned up and organized a little bit better on the website. We just have so much product and um, it's just really, really hard to kind of throw everything into categories. It's, it's, you should see it on our end. It's crazy. And I know it's crazy on y'all's end. So definitely look under the blanks and we are so sorry uh, that it's not the easiest thing to find at the moment. Give us some time on that. We're working. So Victoria says the blanks lend themselves to so many different possibilities. So, 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 so true. And sometimes you guys like before I do a live, you know, or do our um, sneak peek lives, 
I tried to paint samples and you know at that point it's like I might have a few days to paint the samples before the live and so maybe a week and so it's not always I don't always have the time to necessarily think about long time you know uh, what I'm really wanting to do and so sometimes it's like I might show you something as a sample and then by the time it comes down to the live I'm like I don't even want to do that I want to do something totally different with the pattern and you guys have seen me do that a couple of times with the pumpkin picking duo and the triple stack pumpkin I know I did it with both of those and the happy fall y'all banner I did a different version with that too so it's it's nice to be able to see different possibilities and I hope you guys don't mind when I do switch around <laughs> from my sneak peek, what I, I'll, I'll teach you guys how to paint this, this way, and then by the time we get to the live, you know, two months later, I'm like, oh, no, 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 something different. We're gonna, we're gonna change it up. Y'all, I'm switching on to that, uh, this is just my shading brown. I'm gonna kind of pull that all the way down. Keep that fluid motion of that feather. So any of my, my tan color, so I'm gonna shade Reindeer brown with um, obviously shading brown. I shaded camel with shading brown. I'm gonna shade nutmeg with shading brown. And I could have shaded um, my scarecrow as well. I know you guys can't see all of it. Let me see. Uh, I could have shaded the scarecrow as well and it would have looked fine. Uh, but I did, I did actually end up shading that one in camel. But that's the nice thing about brown tones is you can really mix and match up a little bit and it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna start pulling that paint off over here on accident. So I'm leaning across a little far. Normally, I would uh, be turning this thing around, but I don't have too much to do down here, so I'm gonna just kinda leave it like this. A little bit okay now I'm gonna move on up here to the head now I am gonna come back like I told you guys earlier and do the cross hatch or cross stitch or whatever we I can't even think what the word is um, on the feathers which is why I'm not trying to add too much more into it I don't want to make it too busy On these little swish marks, I kind of almost just like set the brush down, kind of just roll along that line up and down a little bit. Uh, hey, Terry, I'm glad you're here. Debbie says, we just got a flash flood warning for Pearland. Y'all, it's like seriously sprinkling. It's That's all it's done today. A little sprinkle, but I am an hour north of you guys, or most of you guys. I know a lot of you guys are in Pearland or Friendswood or you know Clear Lake, League City area, that sort of thing. So much different weather over here, y'all. Okay, uh, I'm just cleaning out that brush right quick. The only other thing I need to uh, put a little shading on is the red on, on here. Let me see, shading red, I got that. And then um, we are going to start, or actually I need to blow dry it for just a second and then we can start our outline. Y'all, this whole time, this brush that I'm using, the shader, or I call it a shader, uh, but my shader is wet as well. So I don't know that I've always, I don't know that you guys always know that, but it, my brush is wet and then my paint is a little watered down. That is just, I think my brush is too wet. I do not like the way that's looking right now. I think I kind of just took all the red out of it. It looks really dark. I'm not sure that I care for that, but we're gonna work with it. So Terry says it's crazy. They got three and a half inches today so far. Yeah, I don't think we've seen that much. But yes, we so need the rain. Oh man, I, I we totally feel you on that. I don't know what it is, but out here where I live, there's a lot of rock um, underneath the ground. And so just trying to take photos of the yard art here at my house, it's like next to impossible. I have to go to where the sprinklers are that come off of my septic system. And they have like the little sprinklers that kind of, you know, put the water back out there into the yard. And I have to go right next to the sprinkler and put the yard art right there just so I can get a photo of it because I can't get it in my ground over here ever. Even in the ground's wet, I still can't. But then um, at the store, it's been really, really difficult to get stuff in the ground. So we're desperate for it there. 
uh, it makes it really hard when I take a load out, like I take 50 pieces out and you can't get anything in the ground. You gotta get a drill. It's not the funnest. Hey Pamela, Pamela says, is there a certain type of brush that is our best to use? I've been uh, trying to learn the shading. Pamela, uh, I'm gonna say, yeah, there, you could use any kind of brushes, really. Um, but you want something that has soft bristles. So any of the brushes that are used for like acrylic paint, that are real hard and stiff, those are not gonna be good for yard art. You want something really soft. Now, I have done where I kind of stick with brands that I know I like, like for instance, these are Royal Gold brushes. You can see how dirty it is, is how long I've been using it. That shader that I was using is also Royal Gold. So because I know that the Royal Gold script liners are something I really like, then I'll tend to go and try to order or find Royal Gold uh, flat tip brushes, which are what, what shaders are, but we call them uh, shaders. Flat tip or flat wash, or maybe wash brushes, something to that degree. Um, so Royal Gold is a good brand that I like, and then there's, there's another one I can't even think of right now. The, we have these brushes. These are the Royal Soft Grip. These are ones that we sell at the store. And these will work just fine too, but the, I think the difference between like this one and the one that I've been using, it's like just a higher grade. So same company, this one's just a higher grade than this one. And I'm dripping water all over. Hopefully it's dry enough though. I just needed to get a little dry so we can outline it. That humidity is really high in here, so it's not helpful when you're trying to dry paint, that's for sure. I think we'll uh, make the best of it. It'll still be a little wet in some spots, but oh well, no worries. All right, mostly, primarily, I'm gonna be using um, shading red to outline. I'm trying to think, I do have a little bit of black, but I think I'm gonna do black at the end. I'm gonna do shading red first. Hey Christy, how are you, hon? Let me just mix this up. I can already tell I don't have enough water. Um, I have a very old brush, so I'm gonna use a lot more water when I am outlining. Newer brushes don't require near as much. And, and if you paint the way that I paint where you get a ton of paint on there and you try to make really long strokes. Uh, that's why I use a lot of waters because I'm trying to make long strokes. I'm trying to do it quickly if possible, you know, that sort of thing. So let's see if I have enough water. I'm really not 100% sure. But another thing about um, humidity and weather is sometimes I'll, I doesn't have enough water to where I like it and I'll go put more water in it and when that humidity is crazy like it is right now, like I'm at 85% in here, I think. That's what I was before I came on here. Uh, but at 85% humidity, and then I add more water into this, and it, it's really gonna start making a big mess. So uh, be careful when your humidity is high. If you're anybody who lives where we do, close to Houston, um, it can be a major problem. We did move to Denver for a couple of years and we've, we've been back here almost two years. And so when I moved to Denver, it was crazy to me that we could have, you know, 30 degree weather and, you know, the humidity, no humidity, and then my paint would still dry faster in 30 degree weather. Y'all, when it's 30 degrees here, not that that happens often, uh, but the humidity is almost always high and I, there, sometimes there will be stuff not dry and, you know, 18 hours, it'll still be wet out here. It's it crazy. So that was kind of a, a nice part about living in somewhere else that doesn't have as much humidity as we do. But yes, humidity and paint are not friends. I don't know if anybody else has experienced that yet. But a lot of times when it's real, real wet outside, I won't even paint. Because to me, it'll be just more of a headache and put me kind of further behind, so. Alrighty. Now I'm coming over to my leaf, uh, my leaves, my feathers, and um, 
I know that some these colors are all different, meaning like I have green and typically if I have green, I would outline my green with black, but not on the turkey. I'm outlining all the feathers in the shading red. So as soon as I kind of get done with the middle part of his body, oopsie, taking that line a little crazy over here. As soon as I get done with the middle part of his body and I move on to these feathers, every single feather is gonna be outlined with this shading red. I'm gonna just kind of keep it consistent keep the look and the flow of the whole thing going. Christy, you like, um, you like Thanksgiving and turkeys? Y'all, I'm so ready for some Thanksgiving or Christmas to get here. I think I'm just ready for, enjoy, you know, the holidays with family and friends and let's just move on to the new year. Goodbye, 2020. Uh, I can't say any of us will really miss you, you know, and uh, let's just uh, start fresh. So, hey, Dolores, hope, hope you're doing good, hon. I'm glad you're able to come see me this tonight. All right, y'all, the black is going to help really bring it to life tonight. Uh, usually we do that. Obviously, white does that. But once we... Um, Get some crosshatch on here with these feathers. They're gonna look so much better. Okay, I might even do, I'm just thinking out loud here. I might even put white on there before, before I do the crosshatch. I'm gonna have to think on that. Some of these lines are a little bit deep. So it's kinda, I gotta go back and forth a little bit. I really do not like the lines being deep. I like them being really shallow, but sometimes I don't get that luxury with my machine because it's like if I don't do it deep, then other parts of the pattern won't come out at all. And so I, I think that, that has a lot to do with the humidity down here as well. We didn't have that same issue in Colorado, but uh, Zach will sometimes tell me, and why did we move back to this hot and humid state? And I'm like, because this is my home. I love it here. So some of the elements of the weather are just, you know, not, not great when it comes to yard art process. All righty, let me add just kind of a little bit here and there. Kind of taking that brush on the inside of these, um, inside of his little wings and adding a little light strokes of that shading shading red. Okay. I think shading red I'm good. Now I'm going to switch to black. Y'all can see right here on this um, feather. See how that paint separating? That's the humidity. Sometimes it only does it on certain colors. And so Shading red is definitely one of them with this lighter background. Okay, clean my brush out. And I think I'm gonna have to mix. No, I might already have some. I thought I was gonna have to get a new black because I thought I left my lid off, but I guess I still have another one over here. I do need to add a lot of water. So. Hey, Laura, how are you doing? Okay, y'all, this is uh, regular black. I'm adding a little bit of water. Now I'm gonna start in the middle and kind of work my way out. I'm gonna do his face first and then kind of move my way around. Okay, let me see. Y'all holler at me if I, I'm getting out of camera frame. 
because it's a uh, it's hard to kind of be thinking about camera angle while thinking about hey go go slow on that line make sure you don't stand, go outside of it keep a good circle i know i've told you guys before i am not the best at straight lines and circles so a lot of times if i'm doing something really straight or i'm doing a circle i kind of got to be a little bit more quiet and kind of focus a little bit more i like the fact that his eyeball is a little bit bigger it's the small eyeballs to me. The smaller the circle, the harder it is for me. That's when I get really, really quiet if I'm doing it with a script liner. You could always add some more into the eyelashes if you wanted to. I know it only adds a couple there. So, hey mama. How'd your uh, appointment go? We were all supposed to go to dinner tonight, uh, but I called mom this morning. I was like, I'm not feeling great, so I'm staying home. So I had to send uh, Zach to go take her some yard art. She was supposed to pick up some yard art from me. So he took care of that. Oh, Lordy B. He took care of that for me and then brought home food. And he's got dinner going in the oven right now. I know I told y'all last week he came home or he went grocery shopping and came home and cooked and he did the same thing tonight. I was like, woohoo. It's almost like, okay, when's when's the next RC race? What is it that what is it you're trying to go do? Y'all feel like that sometimes when your husband's being overly nice? Like, what do you want? No, I think he's just being a sweetheart. I think he just knows that I have a lot going on. He's just really trying to help out as much as he can. The traffic was really good going both ways. Yay. Hey, well, there's, there's a plus. She came all the way to spring at five o'clock. She had a five o'clock appointment in spring. Oh, I was even thinking, man, I'm not trying to get out that time of day. And I live close to spring. I did that line a little thicker than I really wanted to, but oh well. Sometimes that happens. Okay. Add a little on my feathers. Alrighty. Let's see. She said, I could not believe how lucky I got. Yeah. Somebody was definitely watching over you today. Did not have a uh, traffic coming from Pearland to spring at five o'clock and then turn around going right back home. That's crazy to me. Crazy talk. Alrighty. Now I'm just going to do a little bit of that kind of cross hatch, you know, making X's really. I do it very, very lightly, like almost like my brush is, it's not pressed down at all. And I even have some spaces where it's like the paint runs out and it's kind of uh, light wispy. And I really like that when it comes to uh, feathers. I think it looks good for it to not be, you know, too perfect or too thick either. Now, one thing I do feel like I, I struggle with sometimes is trying to keep these lines to where each they're all level with each other you know like they're kind of going at the same angle and that's something that every time I'm painting turkeys and I'm doing this I'm always having to be on the lookout for still can't say I'm not great at it but I do try to pay attention to that keeping them all in the same kind of angle direction 
Maybe it would be easier if I kind of did that same stroke all the way up and kind of kept that same angle going. Maybe that's what I need to be doing all along. And then that away, it'll look more, I gotta move my cart. It'll look more, um, what's the word? Can't think of the word y'all. Symmetrical, like it goes. Just a little light. Notice I'm not loading more paint. I'm, I'm really just using what I have existing in my brush. I want this to be light. Whiskey. Show you guys so far. Snow, I know it's kind of hard to see. So light and wispy. So I loaded my brush at the beginning and then really offloaded that brush and just used what I already had on here to keep on going. Hey D. Hey Lauren. Uh, you need, mom says we need to take this turkey and make a sign that says eat ham. Oh, I love that. How cute would that be? I can do that. That's easy. Now on this sign, I did not outline it in black. Um, I kind of did a little bit of black squigglies and white squigglies across. So I, the only thing I did, uh, do a kind of perimeter outline is the bottom of the sign. And that was really to be able to clean up all these other lines. Just taking that black and kind of cleaning up his, um, his little stake or stick to hold up his sign. Cleaning up those sides of it. There we go. Okay. And then now I'm gonna start filling in those letters. I, th I think Phaedra, I'm pretty sure it's Phaedra was asking the other day. Uh, she was working on a, uh, a ribbon Santa and she was struggling a lot with the letters. And uh, my mom and I were on there trying to give her some advice. And one thing my mom was talking about was making sure that that brush is all the way dunked in there where you've got a lot of paint in that brush. Then once I do that, these litters are kind of small. I will take off a little bit, not a lot, a little bit. And then I'll kind of come in here with that heavy paint and I almost barely push it down. And I kind of let it rest inside of those lines that are there. This is that kind of good part when you get those those uh, deeper lines, the ones that I don't necessarily care for on the rest of the sign. They're not so bad whenever you're doing letters. Kind of throw it down there gently. <laughs> Place your brush, I guess, not throw your brush. Place your brush down in those crevices when you have a lot of paint on that tip and I'm not using any pressure. I'm just kind of laying it down in that crevice and pulling that brush around almost as if I'm tracing on a piece of paper, you know, I'm tracing um, a letter or tracing the outline of um, a picture in a coloring book. It's kind of that same thing. Just very, very lightly load that brush. That brush should never become dry. It should never really run out of paint. I can kind of tell when I need to grab a little bit more paint because maybe my line is already starting to skip and I don't, once that line starts to skip or my paint starts to run out, I just go grab more when I'm doing letters. So I am using a ton of paint. You see how much paint is in there? It's a lot. The more paint that you're using to me, the easier it is to have a little bit better control. Now, more paint means a lot less pressure. Um, so it does, you know, you got to make sure you're not pushing down on it or bearing down on your brush. Uh, just kind of set it down and glide it around. Just kind of how you would a pen or a pencil writing. Also, another thing is, y'all, I don't try to stay inside of those lines perfectly. So many times if you guys have, I'm sure y'all have seen them on my lives or even if you've seen my stuff in person. You come see it in person, there's definitely places where I'm outside of that line. And it's fine, I don't worry about it, because you, you, number one, this isn't meant to be seen six inches from your face. This is meant to be displayed in a yard, so you know it definitely doesn't need to be perfect. And number two, I can also, I can also always clean it up. Go over top of the line, because it's easier to do that than 
doing the small strokes. And then if you like, oh man, I missed this little spot's a little too far over the line. No big deal. Go grab your and a script liner, grab your background color, come in and clean it up. And it'll be a lot easier going from that direction. Uh, Mary says, if you want to uh, age your brush quickly, leave the brush in a bucket of water with Murphy's oil soap for a couple of days. Yes, new brushes are another thing that um, you're not gonna get as, as good of a lay down on a new brush. So try to break it in, leave it in some water for a few days. I think water in Murphy's oil is even better than just water. And, um, and then really you just gotta start having to use it. Kind of like a new pair of boots. I, man, I love getting a new pair of boots until I wear them and then I'm like, oh, this is why I, I don't get new boots very often because they hurt, you know, and you have to break them in before they're comfortable. Brushes are just like that. Same thing. Set it down in that crevice. Make sure you have a lot of, or enough water added to your paint that works well for you. For me, it's a lot of water, but you guys also see my worn out brush. For you, it might not be that, that much water. I've also seen people do the opposite. Now, I don't, I don't do, I do it this way for time rise, but I have seen other people do the letters like painting, for instance, since I'm doing this black, they would just kind of paint this whole area black just right here where the letters are and then come in and kind of go around that with the gray. So, you know, filling in around the letters as opposed to filling in the letters. Um, Time-wise for me, obviously, that's just gonna take a little too long. Um, so that's why I do it this way, but that might be easier for some of you. I say you work with what you think you know, try out what you think would be better for you. I think everybody's definitely gonna be a little different. Some of you might be like, man, I, I don't, I'm not trying to move that fast. I wanna kinda enjoy the process a little bit. And if that's you, then, you know, maybe try it the opposite way of this and see if letters would be easier for you. Try um, filling in the background and then, as your letter color and then coming in and kinda cleaning it up. Y'all, we're almost done. I feel like I've been chit-chatting quite a bit. You just need to uh, wrap up this little sign and then add some white and he will be done. There is my letters. Lots and lots and lots of paint in there, y'all. A ton. So uh, anytime I'm working with letters like this, when I'm using this much paint, I definitely do not try to come in here and add any white to the letters, which you totally can. But my best advice is to let it dry a little bit because it's just really, really wet right now. All right. Let me wash this black out and then we just need to do some white. And then this guy will be done. Cap my lid. And get some white. Oh, that's not white. That's gray. Remember I was telling y'all I can't see you good at night? Yeah, here we are. I think that's definitely white. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, hey, Brian, how are you? Uh, Debbie says, why no outline on the sign? Really? That's just because I kind of did some squiggly lines instead of an outline, but you could totally do a perimeter outline. That's just fine. You could have just done regular gray shading and um, black outline, and that could have been totally fine. I just wanted something a little different. Just a little different. Uh, Mary says, we have our Zoom meeting in the Academy tomorrow at 7. Yes, ma'am. Zoom late. Or I, ooh, I don't think I sent out an um, invite for that because I don't think I created it. So, I got a job to do. I need to take care of that. Mother, I might need a um, reminder text. 
<laughs> Y'all, my mom, uh, she she sends me all these reminder texts. Like if she knows I'm coming in like a couple of days, they'd be like, hey, don't forget to bring this paint or, oh, that's a little too wet right here. Uh, or, you know, bring whatever it is that I'm needing to bring, usually down for the store or a customer or something like that. And so she ended up, I was coming over, I don't know, one day last week and uh, she was texting me every day and then I talked to her the night before I left. I think it was like Friday night I talked to her and I was coming Saturday morning or something. And she's like, okay, I'm sure you're probably gonna kill me and you're tired of these reminders, but here's your reminder to bring, oh, it was something we had to ship, uh, bring those pieces. And I was like, oh yeah, okay. I was like, hey, do you mind texting me that again in the morning? She started laughing. I can never have too many reminders because y'all, I forget everything. Hey, Deborah, how are you, hon? Uh, she said, Deborah says, hey, Ashley, do you think the sign would look okay painted scarecrow? A hundred percent. I think the sign would look really cute painted scarecrow. Deborah, a lot of times, I talked about it a little bit at the beginning. Uh, a lot of times, whenever I'm doing the samples of these for our sneak peek lives, by the time I get to my actual live, I change what I'm wanting to do. And I did that with several patterns, uh, several of the fall patterns. And then I feel kind of bad because I feel like I'm bamboozling everybody because I'm like, hey, I'm going to show you how to do it this way. And then it's like, no, I changed my mind. I'm going to do it a different way. And then, you know, the paint tags that you have on the back, which this one doesn't have it, are different, you know, than what I'm using in the live. So I tried to keep this one the same because I feel like I changed so many other patterns. Um, so, yeah, my mom says she's always reminding me. So true. Mary says uh, uh, the scarecrow background would be good with dark colors. Yo, I just capped my white. I don't even know what I'm doing. I am losing it over here. I capped it going, okay, I'm done. I'm not done. <laughs> Let me come in here and fill in my eyes. I don't know if anybody's painted this pattern, but I noticed these eyes. It's like one eye is smaller than the other, or the circles inside of it are a little smaller. I think it's that one smaller than this one. So that one, I kind of try to do a really big thick line around the perimeter. And then this one, I try to stay on the inside of that perimeter. I still think that eye is bigger though. I wish this was a little bit drier. I have to make do. All right, I am gonna turn it around. Okay, I thought I saw a new question, but I'm uh, seeing things, y'all. I can't see. Okay, there we go. Add a little bit here on the bottom of my feathers. come in on that open space really whenever I'm adding white anything that I feel like is just a little bit on the open side it's kind of where I go with it on the feet I think I did some real light kind of wispy really close to that um, really close to that perimeter outline I'm trying to wipe off some of that extra black paint right here so I can come in with the white I had really thick lines right there. Alrighty, I think, I think we're good. Let's see. Ta -da! He's so white, he's hard to show him on camera. There we go. How cute is he? Super cute. I love all the fall colors on him. Uh, I like the the feathers kind of getting mixed and matched different colors and not being uh, too patterned as far as like both bottom ones being the same color, both middle ones being the same color, both top ones being the same color, you know, kind of mix and match. So you don't necessarily care for these colors, honey, you throw any colors on there. Uh, you can really dress this up and dress it down in so many different ways. And that's why I love the fact that we are going to uh, get a tutorial over this same exact pattern 
but with Victoria next month doing it uh, with all the fun, whimsical feathers that she posted that photo of, I think yesterday or this Saturday. It's just so cute. I cannot wait to see her version. I'm going to say here's a more toned, uh, like a, a, a traditional version. Um, but Victoria's going to do a whimsical one, and I cannot wait to see that. I think this turkey is a cute pattern. Um, I think that there's really so many opportunities for different styles and different kind of ways of doing this, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Sandy says, cute. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, thank you. All right, y'all, so this was it for tonight. I started with uh, one coat of reindeer brown. Really, if you, I used a roller, so I used a really thick coat. If you're using paint brushes or you don't paint on a very thick level, you might need two. And then I came in with uh, gray, light yellow, light orange, red. I got camel, lime green, scarecrow white, and nutmeg. And then I shaded next to everything with um, shading brown, a lot of it. And then uh, outlined with shading red. And that is kind of the wrap up of my turkey. So let's see, Academy tomorrow, we have a Zoom at 7 p.m. And then I'm back with the, it's a gnome. I think it's the pumpkin gnome on Thursday night at seven. And then uh, next Monday, I'm in the Academy with the um, Dracula gnome. So thank you guys so much for being here tonight. I appreciate it. If you guys have any questions that I missed, I'll come back and check the video after I get done. And until then, I will see you guys tomorrow in the Academy or on Thursday uh, here in the Painters Club. Bye, guys. Y'all have a good night.